All right, but yesterday I wasn't here, so I wasn't doing well, so I feel a lot better today. So we left back. Um, so yesterday you guys had like a video lesson to do. So the objective was being able to rearrange equations to solve for a particular variable. That uses your inverse operations um, to rearrange them and then plug in variables to solve for some of them. So this is what you will be tested on. Always use the success criteria to help you figure out, you know, how to be successful on your quiz, because it is all of these things. Um, so here's the videos again, same ones from yesterday. The top one I did make, so it would literally be the same thing that I would have told you if I was here. And then some extra examples from someone else. So someone separate from me, maybe they explain it better than I do in a way that you understand better. So that's there too. All right, do rewatch them if you get stuck. That's why they're there. So you can pause, rewatch, go at your own pace. Uh, then you have, so I should have taken you like 25 minutes to watch those videos and take notes on them. The notes I'll check during the binary check. All right, so if you didn't take notes on them, just make sure you take notes at some point on them. So that was a requirement. Write down the steps, write down a few examples. It's not hard. Um, and then the rest of the time, so about 35 minutes, was for you to work on your assignment. So far, it's scheduled for next Friday. It might be pushed back, just depends on how far we get. But so far, it's scheduled for next Friday. All right, I think 35 minutes was enough time to get 13 problems done. If you did not finish them in class, though, what's the expectation? That you finish it at home. All right, and they do have extra little supports at the bottom that show you an example or help you solve that one. So, you know, if you get stuck, use those. And for the first part of today, we are going to go over any that you were confused on um, on the board. So that's why I wanted you to have it pulled up on your screen. Maybe you're not finished, you can finish it up while we're doing that, or at least look at the ones that we're doing that are similar. And then the last 25 minutes, so at 10.05, you will take your quiz. It's like three question quiz. Some kids found it challenging, but it is just rearranging. All right, so if you're comfortable with that, great. If not, we'll do some examples from your practice that you thought were confusing, and then we'll take the quiz. All right, so who would like to go first? A question from the practice that you thought was confusing. So you should all have it open in front of you so that you can look at the same question. If you turned it in, it should be under the completed tab and saw this, so pull it up. Also, another thing with that, um, if it still says in progress for any of the assignments, now I'm not talking about additional practice because additional practice is not worth points. I'm talking about the assignments that I assign you. Um, those, if they still say in progress, I can't give you a score for it until you submit it. So finish it at some point and submit it. I'm not gonna look and see how far you got. Once it's fully complete, I will give you points for it. All right, who would like to go first for the questions? Yes. Um, All right. All right. And it's for art. So look at your number one question. It might be really similar to this. It might be exactly this. First step from the video is always to identify the variable that you need to solve for. It'll always tell you, so what variable do I need to solve for? For R. All right, you don't need to know what this formula is used for. It is used in the real world. 
All right, but you don't need to know what exactly it's used for. You just need to know how to rearrange it. All right, so that means identifying what you need to solve for and then looking at the operations that are being done to it. So what's being done to the R? Multiplied by what? By T and what else? Also multiplied by, by the P. What else is being done to it? Also being added to the P. Now to figure out, obviously you would undo those by doing the opposite. But to figure out what you would undo first, it's always what is closest to the variable or what's farthest from the variable. Which one? Closest or farthest? Listen to what I'm asking you. Is it always the closest to the variable that you get rid of first or always the farthest? Always the farthest. So what variable is farthest? The P, this P. So how can I get that P to cancel out? Subtract it. So subtract P, do that on each side. On the left side, so pretend that these are numbers. Normally you would subtract whatever numbers are here and get one number. But since we don't know what these numbers are, we're just rewriting it. All right, we can't simplify them because they're not like terms. So you just rewrite it. A minus P on the right side, these T's cancel out to zero. Then we just have P times R times T. Now what's, what do I get rid of? What's being done to the R? It's being multiplied by P and T. That's what it means when everything's all smushed together. It implies multiplication. So opposite of multiplying by P and T would be the bond. And we're gonna do that in the same step. All right, so each side is gonna be divided by P and T. On the left side, are there any like terms that I see in mind? All right. I know this part is probably confusing that there's two P's, but why do they not cancel out? As of that subtraction sign. All right, so normally you would have to subtract these out first and have a number there and then divide it by whatever is on the bottom. Does that make sense? Isn't that what you normally do when it's like two plus three divided by 10? All right, don't you add those together first and then divide them out? So it's the same for over here. So no, it doesn't cancel out on the left side, so we just rewrite it. On the right side, you have the same thing over each other, P over P, that cancels out to what? P over P equals one is what I was going for. P over P equals one when you have the same thing divided by each other. So what happens to the T's? They cancel out, they also equal one. So really I just have one times R, which is R. All right, now this is what you put in your answer box. All right, I'm pretty sure it has the R equals there already. So don't put R equals again, so don't mark it wrong. You have to put what's in the green box there in your screen, and it needs to look just like that. And I do think capitalization matters. Questions on this one? 
Questions on a different one? Are there any other from your practice that you want to go over before the quiz? <laughs> You want to just take the quiz now? Yeah. Nope. <laughs> All right, what's your question? All right, number, number nine. So next, number nine is the next one we will look at. A equals Q plus K over four. M, and we're solving for Q. So yours, may look exactly like this or it probably looks really similar all right so if yours doesn't look exactly like this so put our exact answer in there make sure you replace it with whatever variables that they use all right but if i'm solving for q that's the variable that we need to isolate that's the one that needs to be q equals whatever and you always start with what's farthest from it, or from it, or what's closest to it. The farthest. So which is the farthest out of these three? That's an F. This is an M. Oh. All right. So what operation is being performed with this M? And opposite of multiplying would be, so we're going to divide by M on each side. Can I combine like terms on the left side? So just rewrite it. On the right side, the M's canceled. So we just have Q plus K over four. Why did the parentheses go away? Because we canceled out the M's, which was the only thing that was outside of the parentheses, right? So the parentheses are by themselves now, so they can go away. All right, now keep isolating the Q. What's farther from it, the K or the 4? What's farther, the K or the 4? The 4. Good. Some people think it's the K. Um, what I would say is that it's on the same side of the fraction, which would make it closer. All right, so the 4 is farther. What's opposite of dividing by 4? So do that on each side. On the left side, if it helps you think about it this way, 4 over 1 multiplied out. What's 4 times A? 4a, 1 times m, good, I'm just going to put m, and then on the right side, the 4s cancel, I just had q plus k, so one more thing I need to do to get the, k, uh, the q by itself, which is to do the opposite of adding k, which is subtracting it from each side. Now, if, this, if these were normal numbers on the left side, we would have already multiplied and divided. So it would have just been whatever number that is minus K. So don't break up this fraction at all. It's simply just going to be 4A over M minus K equal to U because the K's cancel. Does that make sense? All right, and then just what's on the other side of the equal sign is what you put in that box. Don't put equals Q, so it'll mark it wrong. Questions there? All right, questions on a different one? Yes. Number three.
So C equals B C minus six or B. Okay. So the variable we're isolating this time is what? The B, right? So if you didn't finish, if you didn't take notes yesterday or you didn't finish your practice yesterday, I would write down the ones that were B. All right. But yes, we're isolating B. So look at what's being done to it. Multiply by C and then subtracting six. You will eventually get rid of both of them, but which one do you get rid of first? And how do I get rid of it? Good, we're gonna do that to each side. Now, can I combine my terms on that side? Answer is no, because I don't have any like terms, so I just rewrite it, C plus six equal to B times C. Now these sixes cancel. Does that make sense? All right, we're done when the B is completely by itself. So what's being done to the B? By C, so opposite of that would be? Good. And remember you're dividing this whole side by C. Um, there are two ways to write it. So you can write it like this in your answer box. But that is the same thing as also writing this. And I'm pretty sure the map Excel will accept both answers. All right, but from there, the B is isolated, right? So either one of these is your answer. Does that help? All right, any questions on this one? Any questions on a different one? All right, I do have an example that I think that would help you. Um, I don't think it's on your practice. So I'm just gonna kind of throw one up there. Okay. So here's one that you can add to your notes. Let's say it's W equals E minus C, and we're solving for C. All right, so we're solving for C. Look at what's being done to the C. What do I get rid of? And how do I get rid of it? If I add E to both sides, does that make it cancel out on the right side? No. Because I get two E's, don't I? So what can I do to make it cancel? Good. Think of it that way. I know it's confusing when it's like a minus sign here. But just think of it like what you need to do to make it cancel. All right. On the left side, can you combine anything? No, so you just rewrite it. Now on the right side, what do I have? Negative C, does that mean we're finished? All right, you're not finished until the C is completely by itself. It didn't say solve for negative C, it said solve for C. So how can I get rid of that negative? I can divide by a negative one. Good, because what's the coefficient if it's not written? One, so negative one divided by negative one. Do that on this side. Now, when it's like this, it's probably better to write it in this format, where you are dividing each of these by negative one, because that's what you have to do. All right, what's W divided by negative one, negative W. And then what's negative E divided by negative one? Po positive E, right? Because you have a negative divided by negative. And then on the right side, what do I have? The C. 
All right, so don't just circle on your test. Oh, W minus E, you think that you're done. If the variable is equal to like the negative version, you're not done. All right, you need to divide each side by negative one, which flips both of those sides, doesn't it? So then this would be your final answer. All right, questions on this one? All right, I do have one more to show you that is similar to one that's on your quiz. And then I'll take more requests. Um, no, but we'll do that one next. We should have one. All right, so here's an example that's similar to one on your quiz. All right, again, I told you what these formulas are used for doesn't really matter to you. All right. You don't need to know that this is the volume of a cylinder to be able to know how to rearrange it. All right, so if it gives you this formula in the blue and it tells you to solve for H, you should be able to do that. Because what's being done to the H here? What operation? So in the blue, ignore what's in the red. Multiplication, right? So to undo the multiplication, we divide. And I know, like, maybe you're familiar with what symbol this is. What symbol is that? All right, it's a symbol for pi. But you don't need to have known that to be able to solve this. Just think of it as another variable. All right? So if I'm multiplying by pi r squared, the opposite would be I'm going to divide by pi r squared and do the same on each side. Does that make sense? Yes, no? All right, because then when this is what my answer would be if I was just solving for H, right? B divided by pi r squared. Questions there. So if it gives you additional information, like, R is for radius, H is for height, B is for volume, whatever. And then it starts giving you numbers and tells you to give you like a numerical answer for the H. That's fine. All you're doing is plugging it into what you already rearranged. So like here's an example of something that might tell you, it might say volume equals 24 pi cubic centimeters. Don't worry about the units. All right, we're not putting in the units into the problem. If it says radius is four centimeters, we're not plugging in the centimeters in there. All right, we're just taking the 24 pi, putting it where B is in the problem. And we're taking the four, I'm putting it where R is in the problem. So do you see how that is plugged in here in the red? Yes, no. So when it tells you to plug in variables, you should know what spots to put them in based on your equation. All right, so this is what it looks like plugged in. Notice that the pi's canceled out. Why did the pi's cancel out? Because they're not equal. If I have the same thing on both sides of a fraction, what does it equal? If I have the same thing on both sides of the fraction, what does it equal? So like right here, pi divided by pi equals one. So that's why it canceled over here. And then all you have left are numbers. So really it's just order of operations to figure out what H equals. Does that make sense? So be aware, like if you were told to plug something in, Plug it in and solve. Questions? All right, which other one from the practice? From the so do you have one on this The final. Yeah, that's the one that we have on the quiz. 
All right, so here's an example. I don't know what number it is on your practice, but we have this formula. You don't need to know what it's for, but it is a formula for area of a shape, and we're solving for H. So look at what's being done to the H. What is farthest from the H that I'm going to need to get rid of first? The one half, how do I get rid of it? I cannot, because right now it's being multiplied by the parentheses. Distributing first, I would not recommend. So there's an easier way than that, and I don't think that'll give you the right answer. Yes. <laughs> Multiply by the reciprocal. All right, remember to get rid of fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. That fraction isn't being added to this or subtracted from this, it's being multiplied by it. So, opposite would be multiplying by the reciprocal. Does that jog your memory? On the left side, what's two times a? 2a. And then divided by one, which is still just two it. On the right side, remember these fractions canceled. So you multiply by the reciprocal. So all you have is a plus b times h. And we're still solving for the h. So what's being done to the h? Multiply. It's being multiplied by these parentheses. So how do I undo that? Divide by that set of parentheses. All right, on the left side, can you simplify anything? All right, no, so you could just rewrite it. These canceled out, and all you have is H, so are we done there? Yes, we're finished when the H is by itself. So this would be what you plug into Math Excel. All right, questions on that one? Questions on any other ones? Going once. Last call for any questions from your practice. When, when she comes back to see her. All right, so then clear off your desk, except for your Chromebook and a pencil. <laughs>